Welcome, foolish mortals, back to the Villain Slayer. Today we're going to follow that classic Disney villain, the Chernabog, also pronounced Chernabog. I've heard it both ways, so, you know, we'll see. <laughs> it's, I think it's up for some dis kind of uh, audience discernment. It's that CH sound, which is pretty commonly pronounced in both ways, so... I guess it's up to you. Uh, I suppose if I knew anybody who was Ukrainian, they could tell me the real pronunciation, but I don't. So there you go. Um, Chernobog was featured in the 1940s uh, movie Fantasia in the clip Night at Bald Mountain slash Ave Maria, which comes in at the end of it and kind of clears out all of the creepy demon stuff happening because it's singing about the Virgin Mary. The story of the Chernabog comes from the legend surrounding Walpurgis Night. Walpurgis? Again, I'm not Ukrainian, so... Grain of salt with my pronunciation, okay? Which, basically, this is a witch's Sabbath, and uh, the Chernabog is basically Disney's version of the Ukrainian god of the night, and he often bursts from Bald Mountain in order to kind of observe the proceedings of the witch's celebration. His servants dance absolutely manically, totally terrifying, and he just kind of chucks them into a volcano because that's what you do when people are bad dancers, I guess. So he throws them into the fire. Um, in his original Fantasia version, you really don't see any motive for his behavior. You just kind of, based on his deme demonic... Um, appearance just kind of assume that he's an embodiment of evil and evil people throw people in fires for no reason so that is what it is you really don't get a deeper sense of why he does what he does um, but he is considered a signature member of the Disney villain franchise possibly at least to me one of Disney's most terrifying villains to me partially because he is so ambiguous which leaves your mind to come up with more and more terrifying things that he could do and his resemblance to Satan himself or <laughs> kind of our stereotype of what Satan looks like just only kind of deepens that feeling of something very ominous he's considered by Disney the embodiment of pure evil so let's see he does not really kind of have the defined sort of flaws and virtues balance that lots of Disney villains have, such as Hades, who is so greedy and envious that he tries to literally take over the universe, but he has to, you know, follow through on any deal or bargain that he makes. So he has this kind of shred of honesty to his character, this kind of caveat, which can become a weakness for him. Chernabog, because of the ambiguity of his character, has none of that, because he really can have no virtues as an embodiment of evil. So he really is incredibly terrifying, because as evil as a villain like Hades, or the Shadow Man, or even Queen Grimhild actually are, Chernabog is worse because he has no redeeming values. If you watch the ABC Once Upon a Time series, a lot of it focuses on kind of the redeeming features of some of the villains and focuses on that balance between the good features and the bad features and how these characters have allowed their bad features to overwhelm them. And the virtues of villains are given to them not in order to make them good people, they're still villains, but in order to humanize them so that we as the audience can kind of relate. I mean, looking at Hades, a lot of his one-liners and stuff wouldn't be so funny if he wasn't somewhat relatable, and so I think they're thrown in there for some levity and some relatability to the villain, and Chernabog has none of that. There is no relatability to this guy. There's nothing good. No redeeming qualities there. He is the ultimate darkness, and he serves as that in Kingdom Hearts as well. In Kingdom Hearts, even the theme song that you get for most villains is not included during your fight with Chernabog. It is actually the Night at Bald Mountain song that is played during your fight with Chernabog in Kingdom Hearts. Chernabog also features in um, the Epic Mickey series and in the Kingdom Keeper series, which is all about the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. He is actually the secret 
primary villain in that. You think all along that it's villain, that it's villain, that it's Maleficent. Of course it's a villain, but it's Maleficent. And it turns out that he has been the puppet master pulling the strings the whole time. I'm gonna be honest, when I first played Kingdom Hearts the first time, ages and ages ago, like over a decade ago, I really thought that that was gonna be the case in Kingdom Hearts. So it's kind of interesting that he's only made a himself present in, I think, two games in the whole series. But, yeah, he's the embodiment of all that is bad and naughty. On a side note, Isaac from Watso Videos once posted a fan theory, and I love his theories. They're all terribly clever, well-researched, well-thought-through, and he's, you know, very well-spoken, and so he communicates them in a w wonderful way. He's done tons of research for his Disney characters, and I highly recommend his channel. But anyway, he has this fan theory that Queen Grimhild and Maleficent have both served and sold themselves to Chernabog in order to gain further powers. This would be why Maleficent's powers could not be undone by Meriwether, because she has more than just a fairy's power. She also has powers from this demon. And why Queen Grimhild, while she has less power than Maleficent, why she has powers at all. Because really she shouldn't as a human being. But it is assumed that Chernabog is the dark spirit that she sold her soul to. If you remember from my episode on Queen Grimhild, she is supposed to have sold her soul to dark spirits. Isaac's theory is that Chernabog is the dark spirit that the queen has sold her soul to, and that therefore Maleficent and the Evil Queen, two of Disney's biggest baddies, are serving this higher darkness, and that they are subservient to him, so while powerful enough to be terrifying to us, he is kind of their ultimate baddie, and often the other villains themselves are seen as being subservient to him. He got a couple comments as I was scrolling the comment section on that video stating that, oh no, you know, Aurora is from France and Snow White is from Germany and Chernabog is from Ukraine, so there's no way these baddies could be connected to each other. Uh, I would just like to state, first of all, that neither of those three places is an island, and since Maleficent can fly, she can easily get from one of those places to another. For Queen Grimhold, she'd probably have to take a carriage or something, so it'd be a little bit more logistically rough, but she could, in fact, get from Germany to Ukraine. Totally possible. On a side note, too, that... While Disney places Snow White in Germany and... Sleeping Beauty in France, you have to remember at all times, too, that these stories have been told all over the world, different versions all over the world. Uh, Sleeping Beauty also has Italian versions, she has Spanish versions, she's everywhere, and so there very well may be a Ukrainian version of these stories as well. They're kind of just generally, vaguely European stories, and some of them even kind of go back to China. If you look at Cinderella, I think one of the original versions of Cinderella is Chinese. Another original early, early, early version of Cinderella is actually Egyptian. So since these kind of come from all over the Eurasian continental area and even northern Africa, I think it's possible that this theory could hold up just in the sense that the characters could have, in some versions of their tale, been from the regions of Ukraine where Bald Mountain takes place. That aside, of course, these are very wealthy royal individuals and traveling is not beyond their means. And if you're so dedicated to the dark arts that you want to sell your soul to an evil spirit, you're going to find a way to do that and try and be at least somewhat picky, I assume, about which evil spirits you sell your soul to. Because when you don't, you end up like the shadow man. That didn't go well. So, presumably, they found Chernabog, decided he was the one to do their dark business with, and either traveled all the way out there, or in a version of their story, they may have already been in that region. God of the Night sounds like a pretty powerful guy, so I'm guessing that just kind of both of them chose it. So I kind of stand by Isaac and his theory that Maleficent and Queen Grimhild worked for Chernabog. However, I also see the argument from that commenter and can totally understand 
how that is an argument to be made as well, specifically as it pertains to the Disney universe where these guys are miles and miles apart. But again, travel is the thing not just now, but was the thing back then also. As far as where these stories take place, as far as like time, I'm really not sure. They're all pretty medieval as far as time period goes, but there's really nothing super specific, so I don't know whether they take place even within a century of each other. We'll have to figure that out as time goes on. Now, on a side note, those of you who subscribe to my Patreon page know that every month I draw a name from a bowl for my patrons, and the patron whose name I pull out receives a prize. Last weekend, Brenda received a body butter that was coconut scented and perfect for a Disney vacation or just a summer out in the sun. This month, we're going to draw another name here. Do -ka -do -ka -do. Oh! This week, Mary, or this week, this month, Mary wins, and what she wins is, again, I mentioned it before, this lip jelly. And it's a kind of a lightly glossy lip balm, perfectly clear like glass when you open it. And inside is a lovely, dainty little flower. So I will be sending that out to you, Mary. And so it's kind of interesting that you two are the first two winners. You, you saw a random. I pulled it out. So no bias. So the rest of my patrons... If you want to receive a prize, you have to continue subscribing, and if anybody else out there wants to get a prize and isn't in my lovely little cup of names, all you have to do is subscribe to my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash shiveringmouse, and for as little as a dollar a month, you'll get more access to these stories and uh, <laughs> a chance to win the drawing. So don't hesitate to tune in. That also has my whole back catalog of podcasts. Um, including the Narnia and other book-related literary sources of fairy tales for my patrons only. So thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll look forward to talking to you later this week.